there are five traps that I found in my life that only a tiny percentage of society understands deeply. But when you do, you can reprogram your mind to, to become happy and finally find peace in your life and freedom from your problems. And the five traps are need, self-image, instruction, attachment and conditioning. Let's start with need. There's so much need in everything we do. The need to get a glimpse from our partner or parents when we walk downstairs into the living room. The need from my employees for them to be reliable. The need for the sky to be blue and the sun to shine bright when we walk outside. It's almost unfathomable how much need there is if you pay close attention to it. The need to have kids is a big one, right? Almost everyone almost sees it as a necessity. To prove my point, you can walk into the hospitals and clinics of people that have difficulty getting kids naturally. Their need for kids is so strong that it is causing them deep unhappiness if they can't have them. And when we finally have kids, we have the need for them to become great kids, whatever that means to you, and the need for us to become great parents. And the truth is that most kids are just a project of their parents for them to feel good, for them to be liked by others or increase status. Don't believe me, just look at what most parents do. They, they always talk about their kids in order to feel better about themselves, I guess. It's almost an ego project but also a literal experiment at the same time. Because let's be honest, most of us don't know what we're doing, right? Maybe one person who is watching this is truly happy, but still we are teaching our kids. Which brings me to the second trap of life, which is conditioning. Why don't we learn from our kids? They seem much happier. And I think it's because they are way less conditioned and thus do things for more internal reasons. So instead of teaching our kids, I think they have a lot to teach us. So ask yourself honestly, if all that conditioning has benefited you, or did it actually limit you? All of these YouTube videos and podcasts that you're watching, are they actually a net positive? Are you gathering the breadcrumbs right now, instead of looking at the whole bread, so you can justify the pleasures for watching all those things? And if I may read your mind right now, is it trying to come up with examples? of recent videos and podcasts you watched or you found some value in it, some hack or tip or thing you didn't know yet? Is your mind trying to gather the breadcrumbs instead of looking at the whole bread? Now ask yourself that one thing or those few examples, were they really worth it? One hour a day of YouTube, 420 minutes of podcasts a week and did it change your life? Was it really worth it to listen to those 12 people for seven hours? who aren't even happy themselves, who don't know what they're doing themselves. Seven hours of pure conditioning and limitations put on you by their limited beliefs. And one minute of a new hack, a thing you didn't know. Was it worth it? Which brings me to number three, instructions. We see them everywhere. Meditate to become better at meditation. Read to become a better reader. Do the Wim Hof breathing method to become a better breeder or pave your own path to find what you truly look for. Freedom, freedom from problems, freedom from anything, because it's a difficult thing, at least to me, when I hear freedom, I, I don't have a good idea of what it really means. But when I say to myself, freedom from stress, I understand that that is often what I look for. And these instructions, they only help you to become better at that thing. But ask yourself, honestly, does meditation give you what you look for or does it just makes you a better meditator and does reading really give you what you want I i've noticed myself and I, I think also a lot of other people read because they want to make more money and they think oh i should read this book from these successful people but is it really making you more money or is it just making you a better reader and with meditation does meditation really help you to find what you look for, which could be peace, right? Or is it just giving you 10 minutes of peace a day? That isn't what I look for. Temporary peace of 10 minutes. If that's fine with you, keep doing it. But all of these instructions are a trap because we believe they give us what we want. But when you truly just honestly ask yourself, examine those things that you do or did before, is it really giving you what you wanted out of it in the first place. Which brings me to number four, the trap of attachment. Because when we find something 
that works for us or, some, or someone that we like. We cling on to it. We can't let go of it. You see this all the time in relationships, right? If you finally think you found the love of your life. Uh, Ella Watt said it best when it comes to love. He said, I love you so much, I can eat you. And it just exactly visualizes the point of attachment. When I speak from my personal experience, I have it all the time as well. For example, with new employees. When I hire a new employee who is great, I get attached to that person because I know how difficult it is to find great people. And you could say, yeah, well, what is the problem with that? But when it is taken away from you, let's say the person quits or um, your love of your life leaves you, then you find yourself in unhappiness. It is not lasting, it is only temporary. Another example would be the all the stuff we buy. So we get so attached to it. Because if you ask yourself, what if someone took everything you have away from you right now? All the stuff you own, the camera, the smartphone, the laptop. What if someone took it all away from you? How would that make you feel? And it leads me to number five, the fifth trap of life, self-image. And this one hurt me a lot. The identity of the successful entrepreneur, the masculine man, or the creative artist. If I may read your mind again, did your brain program these images in front of you when my words landed into your ears? Where you saw the businessman in the black or blue suit, or the testosterone gym guy in the tank top, or the painter in his white, colorful, hippie clothing and smart glasses on. Because of all those self-images, I made some really big mistakes in my life. For example, with the self-identity of this successful entrepreneur, I had to lay off over 60% of my employees. I lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And worst of all, I wasted time that I never get back. By the way, I'm Jordan, did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 40 people. And I'm sharing how I build out my personal brand. And I made these big mistakes all because of the self-image of this successful entrepreneur. So now you may ask, like, what is the solution? Well, what is not another instruction? Instead, self-understanding, deep understanding, or maybe even better said, the, the, the desire to understand. Because when there is a great desire, things happen. And you don't need an instruction. You don't need to tell me or others to do th certain things. You do them and you find your own way. And that's what I did. A great example of how I created more understanding in my life is started around nine months ago when I started walking a lot. And I started talking um, to my voice memo app. I started talking about the problems I faced. And, and I did that several times a week for 30 minutes or so each time. And I began to understand how deep the conditioning is. I saw things I never noticed before. And the beauty of it is that when you understand something, you don't need to do anything anymore. When you truly understand something at its core, I started solving problems without solutions. Instead, I solved the problems by understanding the true problem. And oh boy, does that take a lot of time. It takes a lot of questions. But don't hear me wrong. It sounds like a lot of effort, but it didn't feel like that because of the great desire. But to my mom, it does seem like effort because when I ask her some deeper questions, she turns on the TV and starts watching her reality soap that by the way gets a million impressions per episode in a country of only 17 million people, which just tells me how many people escape from their problems and serious questions in their life. Because she literally says to me, I don't want this right now. And the truth is, she never wants it. She never wants to think about serious questions. And that's fine. She doesn't need to. Because that will be another instruction, right? But the fact that you're still watching this right now tells me you have a natural desire for it. So this is different from other people who, if you really look at how most live their lives, they are not solving their problems. They're escaping from their problems and trying to find happiness and the opposite. But all of that is just temporary pleasure. They chase pleasures instead of understanding the need from which they arise in the first place. Let me say that again. They, most of us chase pleasures instead of understanding the need from where they arise from in the first place. But when you truly understand the root of the problem, the tree of happiness and peace starts growing.